The primary mission of the Indian Army is to ensure national security and unity, defending the nation from external aggression and threats, and maintaining peace and security within its borders. It conducts humanitarian rescue operations during natural calamities and other disturbances, like Operation Surya Hope, and can also be requisitioned by the government to cope with internal threats. It is a major component of national power alongside the Indian Navy and the Indian Air Force. Seven, the Army has been involved in four wars with neighboring Pakistan and one with China. Other major operations undertaken by the Army include Operation Vijay, Operation Madut, and Operation Katus. Apart from conflicts, the Army has conducted large peacetime exercises like Operation Brass Docks and Exercise Sharper and it has also been an active participant in numerous United Nations peacekeeping missions including the ones in Cyprus, Lebanon, Congo, Angola, Cambodia, Vietnam, Namibia, El Salvador, Liberia, Mozambique and Somalia. The Indian Army has a regimental system, but is operationally and geographically divided into seven commands, with the basic field formation being a division. It is an all-volunteer force and comprises more than 80% of the country's active defense personnel. It is the third largest standing army in the world, with 1,325,000 active troops and 2,143,000 reserve troops. One, the army has embarked on an infantry modernization program known as Futuristic Infantry Soldier as a system FINSAs and is also upgrading and acquiring new assets for its armored artillery and aviation branches. Indo-Pakistani War of 1947 and Kashmir conflict immediately after independence. Tensions between India and Pakistan began to boil over, and the first of three full-scale wars between the two nations broke out over the then princely state of Kashmir. The Maharaja of Kashmir wanted to have standstill position. Since Kashmir was Muslim majority state, Pakistan wanted to make Kashmir the Pakistan territory. In 1948, Pakistan invaded Kashmir. As a result, Maharaja Hari Singh appealed to India, and to Lord Mountbatten of Burma, the Governor-General, for help. He signed the instrument of accession to India. It took two weeks for Indian forces to reach the war front. Indian troops were airlifted to Srinagar. 25 This contingent included General Thimia who distinguished himself in the operation and in years that followed, became a chief of the Indian Army. An intense war was waged across the state and former comrades found themselves fighting each other. Pakistan suffered significant losses. Its forces were stopped on the line forms which is now called LOC line of control. Citation needed an uneasy unsponsored peace returned by the end of 1948 with Indian and Pakistani soldiers facing each other directly on the line of control, which has since divided Indian held Kashmir from Pakistan held. Kashmir. The number of unresolutions 38 to 47 were passed calling for a plebiscite to be held in Kashmir to determine accession to India or Pakistan. 26. The precondition to the resolution was for Pakistan and India to return to a state of as was prior to the conflict. Pakistan would withdraw all tribesmen and Pakistani nationals brought in to fight in Kashmir. With Pakistan refusing to pull back there could be no further dialogue on fulfilling the unresolution. 27 28 tensions between India and Pakistan, largely over Kashmir, have never since been entirely eliminated. Side No Indian War In 1962, the Indian Army was ordered to move to the Thagla Ridge located near the border between Bhutan and Arunachal Pradesh and about 3 miles 5 km north of the disputed Mahman Line. Meanwhile, Chinese troops too had made incursions into Indian-held territory and tensions between the two reached a new high when Indian forces discovered a road constructed by China in Opsai Chin. After a series of failed negotiations, the People's Liberation Army attacked Indian Army positions at the Thagla Ridge. This move by China caught India by surprise and by October 12th, Nehru gave orders for the Chinese to be expelled from Oxai Chin. However, 
poor coordination among various divisions of the Indian Army and the late decision to mobilize the Indian Air Force in vast numbers gave China the crucial tactical and strategic advantage over India. On October 28, Chinese soldiers attacked India in both the northwest and northeastern parts of the border and captured vast portions of Oxai Chin and Uttar Pradesh. As the fighting moved beyond disputed territories, China called on the Indian government to negotiate, however India remained determined to regain lost territory. With no peaceful agreement in sight, China unilaterally withdrew its forces from Arunachal Pradesh. The reasons for the withdrawal are disputed with India claiming various logistical problems for China and diplomatic support to it from the United States while China stated that it still held territory that it had staked diplomatic claim upon. The dividing line between the Indian and Chinese forces was named the line of actual control. The poor decisions made by India's military commanders, and, indeed, its political leadership, raised several questions. The Henderson Brooks and Baga Committee was soon set up by the government of India to determine the causes of the poor performance of the Indian Army. The report of China even after hostilities began and also criticized the decision to not allow the Indian Air Force to target Chinese transport lines out of fear of Chinese aerial counterattack on Indian civilian areas. Much of the blame was also targeted at the incompetence of then Defense Minister, Krishna Menon who resigned from his post soon after the war ended. Despite frequent calls for its release, the Henderson Brooks report still remains classified. The second confrontation with Pakistan took place in 1965. Although the war is described as inconclusive, India had the better of the war and was a clear winner in tactical and strategic terms. 35 36 37 Pakistani President Ayub Khan launched Operation Gibraltar in August 1965, during which several Pakistani paramilitary troops infiltrated into Indian administered Kashmir and attempt to ignite an anti India agitation in Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistani leaders believe that India, which was still recovering from the disastrous Sino-Indian War, would be unable to deal with a military thrust and Kashmiri rebellion. India reacted swiftly and launched the counter-offensive on Pakistan. Pakistan launched Operation Grand Slam in reply on September 1, invading India's Chamjorian sector. In retaliation, the Indian Army launched a major offensive throughout its border with Pakistan, with Lahore as its prime target. Indo-Pakistani War of 1971 An independence movement broke out in East Pakistan which was brutally crushed by Pakistani forces. Due to large-scale atrocities against them, thousands of Bengalis took refuge in neighboring India causing a major refugee crisis there. In early 1971, India declared its full support for the Bengali rebels, known as Mukati Ibohini, and Indian agents were extensively involved in covered operations to aid them. On November 28, 1971, Indian Army moved the 14 Punjab Battalion 45 Cavalry into Garampur, a strategically important town near India's border with East Pakistan, and successfully captured it. The following day, more clashes took place between Indian and Pakistani forces. Wary of India's growing involvement in the Bengali rebellion, the Pakistan Air Force PAF launched a preemptive strike on 10 Indian air bases at Srinagar, Jammu, Pathankoti, Amritsar, Agra, Adampur, Jodhpur, Jaisalmer, Uttarlai, and Sursa at 1745 hours on December 3. This aerial offensive, however, failed to accomplish its stated objectives and gave India its excuse to declare a full-scale war against Pakistan the same day. By midnight, the Indian Army, accompanied by Indian Air Force, launched a major three-pronged assault into East Pakistan. The Indian Army won several battles on the Eastern Front including the decisive of Battle of Hilai which was the only front where the Pakistani Army was able to build up considerable resistance. 
The operation also included the battalion-level airborne operation on Tadale which resulted in the capitulation of all resistance within five days. 51 India's massive early gains was largely attributed to the speed and flexibility with which Indian armor divisions moved across East Pakistan. In 1998, India carried out nuclear tests and a few days later, Pakistan responded by more nuclear tests giving both countries nuclear deterrence capability. Although India had tested one hydrogen bombs which Pakistan lacks. Diplomatic tensions eased after the Lahore summit was held in 1999. The sense of optimism was short-lived, however, since in mid-1999 Pakistani paramilitary forces and Kashmiri insurgents captured deserted, but strategic, Himalayan heights in the Kargil district of India. These had been vacated by the Indian Army during the onset of the inhospitable winter and were supposed to reoccupied in spring. The regular Pakistani troops who took control of these areas received important support, both in the form of arms and supplies, from Pakistan. Some of the heights under their control, which also included the Tiger Hill, overlooked the vital Srinathar Leh Highway NH 1A Butalik and DRAs. Once the scale of the Pakistani incursion was realized, the Indian Army quickly mobilized about 200,000 troops and Operation Vijay was launched. However, since the heights were under Pakistani control, India was in a clear strategic disadvantage. From their observation posts, the Pakistani forces had a clear line of sight to lay down indirect artillery fire on NH-1 A inflicting heavy casualties on the Indians. 67 This was a serious problem for the Indian Army as the highway was its main logistical and supply route. 68 Thus, the Indian Army's first priority was to recapture peaks that were in the immediate vicinity of NH1A. This resulted in Indian troops first targeting the Tiger Hill and Tolaling complex in the RS.69 This was soon followed by more attacks on the Butalik Turtok subsector which provided access to Siakan Glacier. Point 4590, which had the nearest view of the NH1A, was successfully recaptured by Indian forces on June 14 Brigade of the Guards Camp D. Maharashtra 100-1949 Parachute Regiment Bangalore Karnataka 1945 Mechanized Infantry Regiment Damat Nagar, Maharashtra 1979 Punjab Regiment Ramgar Cantonment, Jharkhand 1761 The Madras Regiment Wellington, Udagamandalam 1758 The Grenadiers, Jabalpur, Madhya Pradesh 1778 Maratha Light Infantry Belgaum, Karnataka 1768 Rajputina Rifles Delhi Cantonment New Delhi 1775 Rajput Regiment Fatehgar, Uttar Pradesh 1778 Job Regiment Bireli, Uttar Pradesh 1795 Sikh Regiment Ramgar Cantonment, Jharkhand 1846 Sikh Light Infantry Fatehgar, Uttar Pradesh 1857 Dogra Regiment Faisalabad, Uttar Pradesh 1877 Nagar Wal. Rifles Lands Down, Uttarakhand 1887 Kuman Regiment Ranakat. Uttarakhand 1813 Assam Regiment Shillong, Meghalaya 1941 Bihar Regiment Banatpur Cantonment, Patna 1941 Mahar Regiment Sagar, Madhya Pradesh 1941 Jammu and Kashmir Rifles Jabalpur, Madhya Pradesh 1821 Jammu and Kashmir Light Infantry of Antipur, Jammu and Kashmir 1947 Nagar Regiment 1971 Gorkha Rifles. The Milan Regiment Sadatu. Himachal Pradesh 1853 Gorkha Rifles Varanasi, Uttar Pradesh 1815 for Gorkha Rifles Sabathu, Himachal Pradesh 1857 5 Gorkha Rifles Frontier Force Shillong, Meghalaya 1858 8 Gorkha Rifles Shillong, Meghalaya 1824 9 Gorkha Rifles Varanasi, Uttar Pradesh 1817 11 Gorkha Rifles Lugnau, Uttar Pradesh 1918 Ladakh, Scoutland. Jammu and Kashmir 1963 Rashtriya Rifles 1990-year Unical Scouts Shillong, Meghalaya 2010 Sikkim Scouts 2013 Tanks and Armored Vehicles Arge and MKII 141 Futuristic Battle Tank FMBD The FMBD will be a lighter tank of 50 tons. At Conceptual Stage FICB, 
Futuristic Infantry Combat Vehicle Tata Kestrel A modern armor personnel carrier developed by Tata Motors and the Defense Research and Development Organization ERVO. It is developed with the intention to replace age-old Soviet-era BMPs and APCs in service with Indian Army. Expected to join Indian Army by 2017. The Brahmo supersonic cruise missile is a crucial component of the Indian Army strike capabilities. Missiles Advanced Air Defense AAV Missile Launched 2008 Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles Agni V 5000 km 8000 km Successfully tested third time canistered version by DRVO on January 31, 2015. Agni VI 8000 to 12000 km range with Mert warheads. Currently in planning stage. Cruise missiles Hypersonic Missile Nervy Missile Brahmos M Tactical Ballistic Missiles Prehaver Missile with a range of 150 km.142 Short Missile that has a range of between 750 and 1900 km Anti-Tank Guided Missiles Nag Anti-Tank Guided Missile Ground and Air Launched Variant the Indian Ballistic Missile Defense Program is an initiative to develop and deploy a multi-layered ballistic missile defense system to protect India from ballistic missile attacks. It is a double-tiered system consisting of two interceptor missiles, namely the Prithvi Air Defense Pad Missile for High Altitude Interception, and the Advanced Air Defense AAV Missile for Lower Altitude Interception. 143 144 vehicles Tabit Motors offers a full range 6 6, 8 8, and 12 12 multi purpose high mobility carriers. Designed especially for integrating specialist rocket and missile systems. Tabit 2038 6 6 vehicle platform also stands qualified by the Indian Army for Grab BM 21 multi barrel rocket launcher from ERL application after rigorous field firing evaluation trials. Mahindra Axe Light Utility Vehicle to be purchased. The Army needs 3,000 light support vehicles and 1,600 heavy motor vehicles for mounting rockets and radar and for reconnaissance and transportation at the cost of Rs 15 billion. 145 artillery under the field artillery rationalization plan. The Army plans to procure 3,000 to 4,000 pieces of artillery at the cost of 200 billion 3 billion dollars. This includes purchasing 1580 towed, 814 mounted, 180 self-propelled wheeled, 100 self-propelled tracked and 145 ultralight 155 mm slash 50 to caliber artillery guns. The requirement for artillery guns would be met with indigenous development and production. 146 small arms X caliber assault rifle. Replacement for the INSA's rifle in service. 147 multi caliber individual weapon system in CIW's Hell Light Combat Helicopter Modern Submachine Carbine. The modern submachine carbine MSMC is the latest combined venture of ARDE and OFB, developed for the Indian Army on a platform of experiences from the INSA's rifle. RSIs worth $220 billion $3 billion were issued for assault rifles, carbines, pump-action shotguns, sniper rifles, anti-material rifles, general-purpose machine guns and heavy machine guns. Army Aviation Procurement Process for 197 Light Utility Helicopters LUH has been scrapped, of which 64 will be inducted in the Army Aviation to replace the Cheetah and Cheetah Helicopters. Hell Light Utility Helicopter LUH Requirement for 384 Helicopters for both the Army and Air Force. Hell has obtained a firm order to deliver 114 Hell Light Combat Helicopters to the Indian Army. 148 